Welcome to this second lecture of week 4. The focus will be on the following key aspects. Comparing monetary policy instrument, discussing fiscal policy, and identifying the institutions responsible for monetary and fiscal policy. When comparing monetary policy instrument, one should note that open market operations are taught to be a more effective tool for manipulating the economy than changes in reserve requirements. Reserve requirements are taught to have an extraordinary strong effect such that small changes in the percentage leads to a more proportional change in a bank's ability to loan, invest, and create money. For example, an increase in an existing reserve requirement from 2.5% to just 3% of deposit translates into an astronomically large increase and restriction on the banking sector's ability to make loans and investment. And this is when one looks at the total volume of money involved. In many cases, an open market operation may have to be used to dampen and moderate the effects of reserve requirement changes. Although the primary basis of fiscal policy is the provision of public goods and services, it also refers to government taxing and spending in order to influence economic conditions such as unemployment and inflation. This is so because government taxation will, at the end of the day, determine the amount of disposable income available to private individuals and businesses. In this regard, an increase in taxes will, to some extent, reduce the money supply and thereby reduce inflation. Employment can then be affected by taxes in that a tax increase will cut into profit margins of private businesses who may then choose to offset this loss of income by retrenching the workforce. The opposite can also be expected. That is, when a tax cut provide private businesses with the extra capital needed for business expansion, which may in turn require employment creation. The institution responsible for monetary and fiscal policy, here one should Note that the key differences between monetary and fiscal policies inevitably rests on which institution develops these policies. Monetary policy is typically developed and implemented by a central bank, whereas fiscal policies are the responsibility of the national government. In the case of South Africa, there is a constitutional requirement that the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Reserve Bank must consult one another whilst carrying out their respective functions. And this is stipulated in Section 224.2 of the Constitution of 96. In closing, one could reflect on the following question. Based on the South African context, what is your evaluation of how monetary and fiscal policies are managed by the government? Do you think public officials are adequately empowered through legislation to perform their duties effectively and efficiently? Thank you.